Good morning. It is so lovely to be with you this morning, to be here sharing with you what God has placed on my heart this morning, and I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm just really excited. This morning has been beautiful, and it will carry on. So I want to continue sharing with you about this idea that we've looked at for the last few months and years, actually, about resting and sitting with Jesus. And I don't know if you remember a few weeks ago, uh, Adam and Karen shared together about rest and sitting with Jesus. Hello, gorgeous. Um, yeah, a few weeks ago when Adam and, and Karen shared together and they were, um, it was just, it was an amazing time. And for me personally, it was an amazing time and encounter with Jesus. I felt like my spirit connected and I was able to receive and stay present in a way that doesn't happen very often for me, especially now with all my distractions in my life. Um, and I'm not really sure what exactly was said on that morning in terms of like the words, but I know something within me was excited. Something within me was happening and something around me was happening. I received beautiful words of healing for people around me. I received words for myself. I, my body, mind, and soul felt refreshed by the end. It was just, it was an amazing time. Um, but automatically, as soon as I got home, I thought to myself, what just happened? And how can I recreate that? Because I am very much um, a person that likes formulas and rules and things to be put in place and what's happening and when is it happening? And if you are behind schedule, please make sure you tell me in due time. And I was like, okay, well, if this is what happened on Sunday morning, let's do that again. Everyone agree? Yeah, okay. Adam, Karen, let's do that again. Who was sitting next to me? Let's make sure that person sits next to me again. Who was singing when? Which child screamed when? Let's recreate that again because I had a great time and this is what I want to happen again. And as I thought about that, I realized that I can't be after a formula or a fix. I was just after something to recreate the Sunday morning. Um, you know, like, what happened? Let's do it again. And if you weren't here on the Sunday morning, um, even if you were, I really would encourage you to listen to it again because it was an amazing time. And I listened to it again, and then I was like, oh, this is what was said. But I was there in that moment. How do I not remember this? But it was something else that was happening. Um, and as I sat thinking about what actually happened, I realized that even though there were factors that helped be what it was, it was more than that. It was a time when I was able to quieten the noise within me and be present. And this is what I want to talk about this morning, quieting the noise within ourselves and around us. If we read in Mark 6, verse 31, we read this. Jesus, said, Jesus had a really busy day with his disciples. They were busy, busy. Um, I'm not sure what they were doing, but I'm sure they were busy, you know, healing people and praying with people. And he says to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get rest. Come to me by yourselves to a quiet place and get rest. He was encouraging. We are called to rest. We are called to a quiet place. We are called to be away from everything, away from the noise, away from the crowds, away from the distractions. And we see in the Bible that Jesus is often surrounded by people. Jesus often is with people, walking with them, talking with them, praying with them, healing them, always. He's always surrounded by people. But equally, or not even more, he is away from people. He takes himself off. And it's not, what I've noticed as well, it's not something that just happens. Oh, oh, look at this. It happened for Jesus not to be with people. No, he's intentional about removing himself from the crowds. He's intentional about making that time. Because if he wasn't, the crowds would carry on following him. And they would carry on being with him. So in Jesus intentionally is like, no, no, no. You boys stay here. Actually, a couple of you come with me. But he's intentional about this is my time. And actually, when he was very, very busy, he was doing in the middle of the night when everyone else was resting. But he knew that what he was receiving in those quiet, alone, away times was more important at times than the physical sleep and the physical rest. So he was very intentional about removing himself and quieting the noise within him. To be able to do what he did and what he was doing, he had to. 
And the more I thought about this, I realized that we don't want to quieten the noise. Consciously or unconsciously, we don't want to quieten the noise because of what we might find underneath or what we might see or what we might hear when there is no noise, no distractions. And that morning when I sat and thought about it, I was like, I want this to happen again. But what if next time when this happens and I quieten the noise, I see, hear this, this and that. So then I kind of put it off for a little while because that's what we do. The reality is that it is scary. It is scary to be alone and quiet with our thoughts. Our true and deepest thoughts, it can be scary to see them. It can be scary to see what's there. So maybe unconsciously, we keep the noise around. We create noise if there isn't. We hide, we busy our mind and body with things that make those things that we are afraid go away. But this is it. They don't go away. They get covered up by noise. They get, yeah, gone away, but they're not gone away. And one of the biggest misconceptions that I've learned, maybe that I've seen in my adult life, that I believed myself for a long time, is that time heals everything. I've seen, I've heard this many times said, I've been said it to myself, maybe I probably even said it myself to people, time heals everything. And that's simply not true. Time helps. Time makes things that seemed really painful feel less sharp. But time doesn't heal. God heals. And God is the only one that can heal. No time, not hiding away, not traveling, not finding yourself, not a new job. Nothing can heal the way God can heal. Because nothing heals, only God does. But the reality is that we are, do live in a world that everything around us is fighting for your attention. Who has a phone? Come on, put your hands up. You know you all do. I mean, it's probably Chase and Amelia, the only ones in this room that don't have one. Everything in our world is fighting for your attention, for your time, for your undivided attention, which bears the question of, if this everything around me is keeping my attention here, what is it trying to keep me away from? Because it's not really like, oh, this is so amazing, I should spend this my time, all my time doing this on my phone or in front of the TV or whatever else. But if this is keeping me here and it's fighting so hard to keep me here, what is it keeping me away from? There's always noise, always. And where there isn't, we create it. You know, sometimes I'm like, can I just drive without putting the radio on? No, I'm like, ooh, what is that? Oh, I don't like this one. Oh, I don't. We create noise where there is a noise. But noise is a distraction, and noise covers something up. A few weeks ago, uh, Matthew and I, Matthew is my husband, and we have three children, for those that don't know. And uh, Matthew and I were going ready to go out. We were going to go after the kids' bedtime. But he said to me, okay, you go and get ready. I'll go and do the kids' bedtime, all three of them. I was like, great. And I love getting ready very, very slowly and very methodically. You know, I'm going to make a cup of coffee. I might put some music on. And half an hour later, be like, hmm, what should I wear? And I, it's just a process. It's just as exciting as going out. Anyone else with me? No. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Anyone else with hair with me? <laughs> Because it, it takes time. Um, but I really enjoy that part as much as I enjoy going out. Um, <laughs> you did. But this particular day, it wasn't so enjoyable. When next door to me, there was loud screaming. And there was Ollie asking for the 124th book of the night. And for one more glass of water, please. I'm starving. And I was like, but this is not enjoyable. Something that was enjoy So I was like, okay, how can I make this enjoyable for me? I didn't want to hear that, so I created more noise. So I put my headphones in and created more noise, and I turned up the music, and I was like, wow, this is fun. It was not. But at the beginning, it was a little bit. I was like, okay, I can't really hear the noise. And but part of me knew what was happening. Covering up the noise didn't really make it go away. So I was enjoying it, and then, but then it got the point where I had to actually do my hair, and the headphones were in the way. So I was like, oh. And even through the headphones, you, I could vaguely hear something, which was stressing me out more 
because I couldn't quite tell if it was happy screams or upset screams or I don't want to go to bed or oh, I'm so happy to go to bed. It wasn't. <laughs> but it was stressing me out, even that, even though I was making noise and then I turned up the music even louder, but then I didn't really like it because, you know, my eardrums. And so then I was like, oh, do I take them out? And then I have to deal with the noise while this is going to be my nice, nice time to get ready. Or do I keep them in and then they're going to just, oh, it, it ended up being more stressful. Because when you cover something up, it doesn't make it go away. Making louder noises to cover no the noise that you don't want to hear does not work and does not solve any of your problems. Uh, by the way, I'm not saying that my kids are the problems in this situation, but you know. <laughs> But it doesn't solve your problems. In that moment, I needed quiet and peace and just, and I got none of that. And what I got was double the noise because I created more noise to cover the noise that I didn't want to hear. What it did do, the noise that I was creating, it gave me a temporary relief. And what I want to share with you this morning and what I want to encourage you and where I Want, I strive to. I don't want to live from temporary relief to temporary relief. I want to live in quiet and peace. Even when my kids around me might be screaming. Making louder noise to cover up the noise that you don't want to hear does not solve any of your problems. So eventually I took my phone, headphones out and took a deep breath. And I was like, it's fine, it's fine. If I heard some noise, it'll be fine. In 45 minutes, I'll be asleep and I'll be in the car driving away. So I took my headphones out. And in that moment, it was the most beautiful noise in the world. My kids were laughing and they were playing a game. And Leah was giggling on the floor while the boys was jumping on Matthew. And ha, 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 daddy, let's do it. And it just, I almost cried. But I didn't because makeup. <laughs> but it made me feel like, oh, I was covering that up. I thought it was a horrible noise. I thought it was something not good. But this is so beautiful. And I almost missed out on listening to that beautiful noise. Like, oh, it was just amazing. And I was like, oh. but why am I telling you this story? Because as I was contemplating how to create the Sunday morning from a few weeks back, I heard God clearly tell me that I must quieten the noise within me to recreate what was happening. It doesn't have to be a Sunday morning, a person talking, a teaching being shared for me to experience him, but I must quieten the noise. And as I heard this, I felt a bit scared of what I might find at times underneath the noise. Just like I was doing it with my kids, I didn't want to take my headphones on. I didn't want to quieten the noise that I created because I was scared of what I might hear. And at that point, I was reminded of this story with my children, and I heard him say, quieting the noise doesn't mean you'll only find bad things underneath. You might be surprised of the good things that are there. I was reminded of this story with my children because I could have done just that, missed out on hearing the beautiful play that they were having because I was too scared. I was too frustrated, tired, overwhelmed to deal with what I thought I might find underneath. All those things were my thoughts, my preconceptions, my assumptions of what might be underneath. And yes, it, it, there was a big chance of taking the headphones out and being loud screams there. But putting my headphones in wouldn't have made that any better or worse anyway. And God carried on speaking to me and he said, yes, some things might be scary to face. Some things might be upsetting to hear, but there is so much more as well that I want to tell you when you're quiet. When your mind and body are quiet and ready to listen, things that you might miss because you're covering it all up, the good and the bad. When we cover things up, we think we cover the bad, and somehow the good will, I don't know, surface. But we cover it all up. And because of our own insecurities and our own fears of seeing, facing the bad things, 
we miss out on all the good. And the good is so much more than the bad. The good is so much bigger than the bad. And hear me when I say, I am not trying to deny that there is real trauma that some of us have been through. Some really hurtful and painful memories and things that seem easier to hide and not think about. I'm not saying those things are good. But I am saying that my God is good. The God that I worship and know is good. He is good. He is not the cause of those painful things. I myself have been through some hard, horrific things, times in my life. Some things that for many years I've tried to cover up with noise and not think about. Some things that I believe that if I never talk about, I never think about, surely they will go away. And surely they will just be left alone. They'll, they're better to be left alone. Why bring something up when it can just be unsaid? But only when facing them and finding God in the midst of them, I have found healing and relief. Because time doesn't heal. Yes, being quiet with them was hard. Seeing and hearing some stuff was not easy. It was not a quick fix. It wasn't like, woo. I'm not saying that. But God did not cause them. God did not cause my trauma, my anything in my life that was not good is, is not come from God. God did not want it for me. And hiding away from them, they don't make them any better. In fact, God found me right there in the quiet place and took it all away. And he replaced that space with love and with healing. The things that you might be reluctant to see and hear will not go away when avoided. They just don't. If we read Revelations 3.20, it says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. He is always here, waiting, knocking, waiting for us to hear, waiting for us to enter his pre presence. It's never a question of, oh, I wonder if God might show up. It's never a question of, oh, I wonder if God will enter our presence. It's never, a, oh, half past ten has started, God has entered the building. No. It's us that need to show up. It's us that need to enter his presence. He dwells in this place. He dwells in your homes. He dwells within you at all times. There, knocking, see, waiting, talking. It's us that need to show up. Us that need to create the space to be able to hear it. Adam said this a few weeks ago. The number one priority for every follower of Jesus right now is to learn to rest with him. Is it my number one priority? Because it's, ne it's not, I really need to make it my number one priority. We cannot find rest in noise and chaos. We find it in quiet. And take this from a mom of three under four. And I'm not talking about removing the physical quiet because for realities, I, I won't be able to for a few years. But within that, I must find the space to quiet in the noise. What might scare us is that we will not find peace and rest in the quiet. We will find something that we've been trying to get away from. So we go, don't go to the quiet place. We don't make space for it. We hide from it and cover it up with noise. That fear of what we might find underneath stops us from receiving all the good and healing from all the bad. Jesus says, come away with me and get rest. He's not saying, come away with me and we'll look at your deepest thoughts and I'll tell you about each one of them and I'll point them out and I will tell you off for them and I will expose them for shame. Uh, there's no, it's not in my Bible, that verse. He's not saying that. In Ephesians 5.13, we read this, everything exposed to light becomes light itself. Everything exposed to light becomes light itself. In the mirror translation, it says this, darkness loses its grip upon that which light manifests. Light 
displaces darkness. There is everything exposed to light becomes light. Have you ever been in a situation, and if you're not scared of that, you might not have been, where you maybe walk downstairs and something, it's like, oh, they're so scary. And then you turn on the light and it was just the coat hanging. And it's like, oh, I thought that was a person in my house. <sighs> but the moment you turn on the light, everything makes sense. The moment you turn on the light, you're like, oh, there was nothing to be afraid of. But if you keep the light off, your mind will create even worse scenarios. Your mind is like, oh, that does look like an arm. Yeah, I'm sure I've seen it move. And you turn on the light and it's just your coat because you forgot to put it in the cloakroom. Light, everything becomes light. Everything in the dark becomes light. It can't. It, you can't put the light on and still be like, oh, I can't see. He wants everything to be exposed for your own good, for your own healing. Um, a few years ago, after spending some time with God, in, it was, I think it was in the middle of lockdown, and um, I listened to the word online, and as I spent some time alone, I asked God if there's anything he wants to speak to me about. And I heard him say that there is some things that I need to bring to light, something from my past, something that I try not to think about for a long time. And when he said that to me, I immediately thought, surely he wants to bring it to expose me, to shame me, to punish me, to show me how wrong I was. But even with those thoughts and fears, I was like, I knew that I still had to bring it to light because what was inside me was worse. Sitting inside me was stealing my joy and life and everything. So I was torn. I was like, I know God clearly told me I need to expose this to light. But if I do, this could happen. And again, those were my thoughts. I was still in the dark at this point, and I was making up scenarios instead of just turning on the line. So I did take the really difficult step of sharing it with someone who I trusted and who I knew had the measure of the Father's heart. When I did that, I, what I found instead was love, peace, acceptance, healing, and relief. I found that he only brings things to light to heal and restore, never to shame and point a finger. And in that time of healing, I heard God tell me through the person I shared with that this healing and release will open doors to the desires of my heart, to the things that I prayed and hoped for. Not because he kept them away from me, not because he was punishing me until I did this, but because now I was in a place of receiving. I was in light. There was nothing hidden, and I was in a place of hearing him with no distractions and no covering up noises. The truth is that sometimes we have to clear out the rubbish in our lives before God can fill it with what we really want. You can't, yeah, yeah, we have to clear out the rubbish. Think of your own rubbish at home. Oh, stinks. You can't think, oh, we're going we're gonna to make this my fruit bowl now. <laughs> because you know they would make everything bad. So you have to clear it out. You have to take out those things. When I was completely honest and open and brought it all out into the light, the part of my life was completely clean out, as it were, and it was ready. And then God filled it, as only God can, with goodness and beauty and purity and delight. And the one thing that I believed that God was keeping away from me, the one thing that I thought he was punishing me for, the one thing that I prayed and prayed and prayed for years was to have Leah. And I was like, surely this is not happening because God is punishing me. And when this happened and God told me it's going to happen, and it didn't happen straight away. 18 months later, I was pregnant with Leah. But it was the one thing that I, the one big thing that I was like, surely God is keeping this away from me. And maybe he has a checklist. And when I do the checklist, then he'll give me the desires of my heart. And in this time of bringing things to light, of receiving healing, restoration, and relief, God was like, I had it ready for you all along. It's yours. It's the desires of my heart. If it's the desire of your heart, it's the desire of my heart. And then he filled it with goodness and beauty and purity and delight. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. 
get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learned the, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. This is what he wants for you. With you, for you. This is what he wants. This is his only desire. But this happens in the quiet, in the getting away with him, when all distractions and obstacles are removed, when the desire to get rest and healing is bigger than to hide. When we make space for what he wants to tell you and make space to just be, when we quieten the noise internally and externally, physically and metaphorically, when we quieten the noise, we receive this rest that he's talking about. So this morning, I just want to encourage you to make space to quieten the noise, to allow his light and goodness to invade every part of your mind, body, and soul. Trust in him, trust that he is good, and allow him to speak. Right now, you might be thinking, but what about this and what about that? But what about the time when? But that's not listening. That's you making more noise in your mind. Quieten everything in your mind and just listen. And I'm going to finish with this verse from Isaiah that says, This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. In repentance and in rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. In quietness and trust is your strength. Amen.